Imagine the horror. When I woke up from the surgery, I couldn't move. A trusted doctor, believed to be under the influence in the OR. LSD, cocaine, pills. And it's your life on the line. He was acting as a serial killer, and he was serially maiming the patients. This story is more than a medical nightmare. It is a real life case, according to former patients and authorities, of a psycho with a scalpel. He sounds like the worst doctor in America. Quite possibly. It's one of Kelly Martin's favorite times of the year, Christmas, when the devoted wife and mom opens her home and bountiful garden to friends and family. She made every single person that she came in contact with feel so special and important. But one little slip would turn everything upside down. We were getting Christmas decorations down from the attic and I was handing her a box and she missed a step on the ladder and she fell backward. The holidays come and go, but the pain in Kelly's back lingers. She had done some exercises and some th physical therapy and my mother's not the one to complain ever. No complaints, but who wouldn't jump at the chance of being pain-free for good? That's when Kelly meets Dr. Christopher Dunch, a new hotshot neurosurgeon with an impressive resume and a slick infomercial. He seemed intelligent, seemed like he knew what he was talking about. Patients like Philip Mayfield hear Dunch's scalpel is a magic wand, making pain vanish into thin air. I checked him out through so many different websites that gives the ratings to doctors. And how was his rating? Oh, five star. But. Had you known the truth, would you yeah. ever even have walked no, in the no, door? No, if I known the truth, I would have never walked in here. Kelly Martin's family would know the truth soon enough. This is the rest of Easter. It was explained to us like a very routine surgery, almost like kind of getting a cavity done. You know, this is something that just needs to be done and you're going to be fine. Kelly even asked Dr. Dunch, have you ever had any bad outcomes or deaths on your surgeries? And he said, no, knock on wood. But there's no luck on Kelly's side that day. And according to investigators, no medical expertise either. During the surgery, she started bleeding. A problem? Dr. Dunch doesn't think so. He just uh, sewed her up and said she's OK. But Kelly was far from OK. Hospital records give a harrowing blow by blow of Kelly's fall from minor procedure to medical emergency. The anesthesiologist was expressing concerns the entire time, over and over and over again. I cannot get her blood pressure up. Kelly continues to hemorrhage, nurses noting the patient's pale color to face and breathing increasingly labored. The nurse that we spoke to, we could see it on her face that something was wrong. The reports document multiple attempts to stimulate patient. All the while, Kelly's family wrings their hands with worry. I was getting a sick feeling in my stomach that things weren't going well. In the OR, Kelly's blood loss is sounding alarms, her condition deteriorating. It's that they, Kelly was reacting to a, a situation what they call DIC. And DIC is an acronym for death is coming. So why is Dr. Dunch proceeding as if nothing was wrong? He didn't address it. He should have flipped her over and found the bleed and stopped it. But he didn't. And then it was too late. She bled to death. She bled, she bled to, death. to death. Internally, all her blood spilled out into um, her abdomen area. Leading to that final terrible note from the OR, CPR stopped, patient expired. How does this happen? Um, how do you wake up one morning and realize a couple hours later your mother's not gonna be with you? The surgical team shuffles into the waiting area with the terrible news. Dr. Dunch never said a word and um, kind of looked down at the floor, not even giving us eye contact. The reason for Kelly's death is simple. He called it a medical miscalculation. The response is heartbreak and rage at the man who cut their mom open. It was like the most surreal, horrible moment in a person's life because I just knew as they were coming in that they were not 
smiling. There was not joy in their voice saying that we saved her life. It was, I'm sorry, your mother has died. And that is the worst feeling. And seeing my dad in the corner rocking back and forth, I just became so enraged with emotion. I think I almost like lunged at him with my hands. Like I, I knew that something was wrong and I wanted to hurt him. Something was wrong. As it turns out, this medical miscalculation wasn't an isolated case. Extreme blood loss, vertebral artery injuries, spinal cord injuries, paralysis, quadriplegia, misplaced hardware. And, and the list goes on and on. Yeah, he did on. all those things multiple times. <laughs> Over only 18 months in this small part of Texas, it's a spree of medical mayhem that's unprecedented. What does it all have in common? The same healing hands of Dr. Christopher Dunch. We had 38 patients and 32 of those people were injured. Two died, 20 of those were seriously injured. And while Kelly Martin's family demands answers, the history of Christopher Dunch comes chillingly to light. The word was out in the neurosurgical community. Everybody knew that there was a bad doctor on the loose. The question is, can he be stopped? Lee Passmore is struggling with his recovery from back surgery, taken out of field work in the Collin County Medical Examiner's Office. And in an unbelievable twist of fate, Lee is on desk duty when the fax machine starts buzzing. The case that, that had come through the medical examiner's office was the case of Kelly Martin's. What was the medical examiner's office trying to figure out about Kelly Martin's case? They were trying to determine the cause and manner of death. But it's not the name of the deceased on the fax that catches Lee's eye. There was a cover sheet that came through that had Dr. Dunch's name on it with medical records. As the pages were coming through, I was sitting there reading it, and it just was surreal. Surreal because Lee himself was recovering from a botched Dunch surgery and nearly suffered the same tragic fate as Kelly. The assistant surgeon who was working with Dr. Dunch for the very first time became so alarmed at what Dr. Dunch was doing that he physically stopped the surgery grabbed the tools, put his hands over the surgical site, and demanded that Dr. Dunch stop. He said, you're dangerous. I'm never working with you again. Lee Passmore claims Dunch's work is beyond shoddy. Cages improperly placed, screws are in too deep in, tips are poking out into nerve beds, everything else. It's complete slop. Lee Passmore, Kelly Martin, so many more lives destroyed by Dr. Dunch. Alarms start sounding off in Dallas's medical community. The assistant surgeon told the medical board that Dr. Dunch was dangerous and needed to be stopped. But Dunch doesn't stop. He resigns from Baylor Hospital and sets up shop at Dallas Medical Center. Once Dunch picks up a scalpel again, the results surprise no one. When I woke up from the surgery, I couldn't move. You what? I couldn't move. The only, only thing I felt was pain, and I couldn't move anything from the, you know, the neck down. Then there's Mary Eford, now imprisoned in this wheelchair, and Jeff Glidewell. Mr. Glidewell was left with a big hole in his esophagus. For months, he couldn't eat or drink anything because it would just spill out into his neck. Add to these the tragic case of Floella Brown, whose surgery causes a stroke that takes her life. Dunch is like a wrecking ball in scrubs ripping through Dallas. The Texas Medical Board finally revokes his license. Then the lawsuits bring Dunch's darkest secrets to light. Chris used drugs. Just used plenty of drugs. A friend who used to party with Dr. Dunch wants to conceal her identity during this deposition, but she reveals tales of a dangerous Jekyll and Hyde concealed under Dunch's lab coat. And how, how long did this party, this drug party, go on that night? All night to the next day. Until the sun came up? Well beyond the sun came up, because Chris had to go to work the next day. And he went. How did you know he was going to work? Because uh, he had to go make rounds at the hospital. Making his rounds at, of all places... At St. Jude's Children's Jude's. Hospital? It was a constant problem. He believed that they made him better in the operating room. He called them his neurostimulants. 
what do you call them? <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine and vodka. Yeah, yeah cocaine and vodka, right. absolutely. He also uh, Adderall, Ritalin. Yeah, some prescription drugs. Yeah. Wow. Dunch's response. Have you ever been under the influence of cocaine while you were taking care of a patient? I take the fifth. I take the fifth. I take the fifth. The doc's not talking. His writing, on the other hand, says everything. All we know is his actions and then his emails and the writings that we have. And that gives us a glimpse of who he is like this four-page rambling email to one of his girlfriends. He compares himself to Einstein and God and writes these romantic words. You, my child, are the only one between me and the other side. I am ready to leave the love and kindness and goodness and become a cold-blooded killer. He is saying, this is who I am. I'm ready to stop being a good person and doing these nice things and go be a cold-blooded killer. Broke, unhirable, and dangerously unhinged, the star doctor continues to fall. He's captured on this security camera stealing merchandise from a Walmart. It was like pants and, um, you know, like a hat and some watches and sunglasses and then a Diet Coke and a mouse and a keyboard and just the most random assortment of items. But Dunch is no better at shoplifting than he is at surgery. Walmart has really good security cameras. <laughs> they can zoom in and follow you. Dunch is arrested, but even from jail, the discredited doc plans his comeback. He wanted to continue operating elsewhere. Yes. He had said, I was just planning on applying for a license in other states. I mean, he was already gathering his documents. Were you mortified at the possibility that if he got off, he was just going to get a license elsewhere? Yes. Absolutely. When we mentioned it to a few of the patients, they started crying. Crying and asking, what will it take to put Dunch's butcher shop out of business? Prosecutors say disgraced Dr. Chris Dunch has maimed more than a dozen patients and killed two more in 18 months. Mostly he just had a huge ego. Dunch is not only arrogant, authorities say he's dangerous. He wasn't going to listen to anybody who was telling him he was doing anything wrong. They yank his license in Texas, but what scares everyone the most? Dunch is prepared to pack his doctor bag and take it on the road. He had said, I was just planning on applying for a license in other states. I mean, he was already gathering his documents. There may be only one way to stop him. We thought it was important that we send a message that we were going to vigorously prosecute anybody who would do that to the citizens of Dallas County. The District Attorney's Office of Dallas County steps in with criminal charges. He was a doctor that did what he did knowingly and intentionally, and he didn't care, but we did. This is the original surgery that he did that was at the wrong level. She didn't need this surgery. It wasn't going to help her pain at all. Michelle Shugart and Jacqueline Lambert lead a legal dream team that finds a way to stop the scalpel of Christopher Dunch for good. Well, he ended up with uh, five counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and causing serious bodily injury, and then one injury to an elderly person, uh, which is the one that we actually went to trial on. Those deadly weapons are his hands and his scalpel, and that elderly person, Mary Eford. You wanted to convince the jury that he knew damn well that what he did to Mary was wrong because he had done it previously with the same outcome. Right. To some degree. To some degree, yes. Yeah. Before he ever stepped foot in that operating room, he had hurt all these other people. And so he knew before he even went in there, he was going to hurt her. And then while he was in the surgery and he did all of these things, he knew he was hurting her and he left her that way. There are no other surgeries in this time frame. So every single surgery he is doing, he is injuring and killing people. Living with pain every day of my life. Mary Eford's testimony against Christopher Dunch tugs at the heartstrings of every juror. I have dealt with depression really bad since it happened. There were days that I would cry every day. Even fellow doctors throw the reckless Dunch under the bus. And after 
the Kelly Martin case, I called the Texas Medical Board and I said, like, listen, we've got real issues with this surgeon. But where was the Texas Medical Board when Dr. Dunch was botching surgeries and killing people on the operating table? I would expect Texas Medical Board to stand in and stop him and protect the patients, but they didn't do that. I mean, who's regulating the doctors out there? Melinda Lehman is Dunch's attorney, and even she can't defend him as a doctor. Your client has been called one of the worst doctors in America. He's been labeled Dr. Death by local media. How do you answer to that? Well, I'm not going to dispute that he's a subpar surgeon, subpar doctor, shouldn't have been practicing medicine. I don't think anyone is going to dispute that. But the real sucker punch is yet to come. This heartbreaking testimony from an unbelievable source. Is this difficult for you to talk about? Yeah. I will say that Jerry's surgery was catastrophic. I mean, um, it was a mess. And Jerry's injuries, he has the worst possible scenario. Jerry Summers was Dunch's best friend. Today, he is so crippled, it's difficult for him to go anywhere. Prosecutors make special arrangements for him to testify from his home as another victim of the doctor's bungled surgery. First thing I remember is, is uh, not being able to move, and, um, and I just was kind of freaking out. He started bleeding profusely. And so the defendant started packing in gel foam, which is like a coagulant to help stop bleeding. And he packed so much in on the spinal canal that it basically caused a spinal cord injury and put compression on the spinal canal. And that's what basically cut off, you know, the feeling from here down. Just feels like your body weighs about you know, 10,000 pounds and you can't pick it up. And so. Could you move? Anything? My head, uh, go forward, I'll press forward. To go back, I'll just press back. And when was the last time Dunch reached out to his former friend, the one he reduced to spending his life in a wheelchair? A couple of years, a year or two. Jerry lives with paralysis and constant pain. <clears throat> If Dunch has any remorse for his old friend, you sure can't see it on his face. But nailing Dunch for good means one last tactic. Its power is undeniable. Victim impact statements from a parade of Dunch patients. We wanted to overwhelm them with the number of patients that he had injured and ultimately we put on 16 and they just kept getting worse. The unbelievable number of lives changed by this despicable doc is all the jury needs to see. Dunch is convicted of intentionally causing serious bodily injury to an elderly person. What's more remarkable is the sentence. Life in prison with a 30-year minimum. He'll know for the rest of his life he'll be in prison for what he did. You got justice. Yes, we got justice. I'm just so grateful from the bottom of my heart. This will not bring my mother back, but it is some sense of justice for all of the families, for all of the victims.